Hello, today we are looking at the adjustable gap receiver. And the adjustable gap receiver is something that I have been talking about for many years, uh, maybe eight or nine years now. And I've really wanted to put this into production all that time, but it's, it's really taken that many years just to get to the point where I understood exactly how to put it into production and of course to learn how to make them. So we're gonna review that. And uh, this Summit Trumpet, has an adjustable gap receiver on it. All Summit Trumpets from this day forward will include an adjustable gap receiver, or an AGR as we call it, unless of course you don't want one. So if you have a horn on order right now, you should receive one. If you haven't uh, discussed that with us, we can uh, inform you on which uh, design you would like or the options of which design and uh, of course, uh, discuss exactly how that works. So this video is intended to show you how and why you would want to have the adjustable gap receiver and uh, what it does. So what it really is, is an opportunity to change the venturi of your lead pipe so you can make your horn feel more open or more tight and at the same time to change the gap. And uh, we do that by unscrewing the receiver itself right here. And uh, the receiver is designed so that it can unscrew and you can put different styles of receivers on. If you wanted to play a coronet mouthpiece on your trumpet, you can just buy a coronet receiver and put it on. Same with flugelhorn, trombone, tuba mouthpiece, whatever you like. Um, and it's designed in such a way that when you screw it on, it has double threads and it only takes five turns, full rotations, to put it on. So it's a pretty quick, simple system. A lot of people would be concerned right away, what if it gets stuck? There is a small slot on the bottom side and there's a spanner wrench that you can either um, buy or you can just even have get one at a hardware store. And you can unscrew it if it did get stuck, but it really shouldn't get stuck uh, unless you just didn't care for your horn. So um, how does it work? You simply put a mouthpiece in and turn slightly to the clockwise direction when you put it in. And if you don't put it in or too hard, you should be able to turn it clockwise to pull it back out. If you turn it counterclockwise, you may unscrew, and then you would need two hands, or you can pull your hand in. So, pretty simple to use, but it does not lock on. You can just simply tighten it down with your hand. Once you see one in person, you'll see that it's very well built and uh, that it does lock in place. So, in reviewing, um, what gap is and why we care. I have a cutaway here of one of the adjustable gap receivers and you can see the threads. This section would be the lead pipe and the rest of it is the mouthpiece receiver. So the mouthpiece comes in and it seats. The gap is a space from the end of the mouthpiece to the beginning of your lead pipe. Now this system works this way. Imagine this is the end of the lead pipe because the lead pipe actually does get soldered into this part and it, this is the end. So we have quite a bit of gap here. I have quite a few mouthpieces here. So we will show some various gap distance. This is a Marcinkowitz. There's a Bach. Bach has a little more gap than the Marcinkowitz. There's a Shilke. Shilke has almost no gap at all. They have very long shanks. All right, here is a, a Yamaha. A little more gap. Here's a Monet. A lot of gap. Here is a GR. Uh, about an average amount of gap. And this is just a sampling of a few mouthpieces. I have multiple mouthpieces from all these brands. The Shilkies tend to be very consistent. Uh, most of the Monets tend to have a very large gap and most Shilkies have very little gap. Most of the other mouthpieces, I find that they have various uh, shank lengths and the gap can be all over the place. So how do we deal with that gap issue? And why do we even care? Well, if you have a Monat mouthpiece in the same horn and it produces a lot of gap, 
then your slots are going to be really hard, which means as you slide up and down the partials of the horn, the notes will lock in really, really hard. And you may find that as you slur open notes, C, G, C, E, G, B flat, C, when you get up to the upper notes, you may get so locked in on one note, the slots are so hard, that you can't slide up to the next one. Now if you put in a Schilke mouthpiece, which has almost no gap at all, and that's true on most horns, then um, the flexibility is improved and the slotting is less defined. Or in other words, you can slide up and down the range of the instrument much easier, hitting all the partials, but to land real solid on one of them isn't quite as easy. You need to put more um, focus onto uh, hitting the right partial, getting your airspeed right, and using your ear. So there's advantages to having you know, some slotting and some flexibility. We always want that balance. Um, the adjustable gap receiver allows you to do that because when I unscrew the receiver itself, I can put one of these shims on here and each shim is a different size. So if I grab the smallest one, then this one has the least amount of gap. And I snap it on the end and then I screw it in. And I'm just showing on the cutaway how that works. And of course it is a cutaway, so it may not actually work. Okay, so now this one produces almost no gap and a shilky bottoms out. But if we go to the Monat, it seats in just right. And I know because I've measured this one before. Now the Monat has almost zero gap. So if you were looking for no gap at all, then this shim fits it perfect. And uh, some of these others will bottom out. Looks like the GR bottoms out. And I believe all the others do, except my own personal mouthpiece, which again, should be zero gap. So what you want to do is choose the right shim for the right mouthpiece. And since it only takes about five seconds to take the receiver off and to put a new shim in, then it's a pretty simple process. Um, with these five shims that are included in the kit, you can fit all standard mouthpieces and get within um, under a tenth of an inch of gap. Uh, most people find that between a tenth of an inch and sixty thousandths of an inch, then you have a nice balance between being very flexible and still having some slot in there. I personally play with almost no gap whenever possible, and uh, I have no problem doing that. Um, and uh, I, I guess essentially the idea is that since not every mouthpiece is consistently the same shank length, then here we can fine tune this. And we can fine tune it again and again. If you buy a new mouthpiece, you can set it up so that you can set the gap exactly the way you want. Um, the other thing that the adjustable gap receiver allows you to do is change the venturi. So you could buy any shim, if you already know which shim you like, which size you like, then uh, you could say, well, I want a little tighter blow or a little more open blow. Then you can buy a shim that say, uh, smaller venturi and it literally makes your lead pipe a little smaller at the beginning so for some of us as we age um, We use less and less air and it could be that it would be advantageous to have a Smaller venturi as you get older, you know when you're in your 70s and 80s and 90s and hopefully even older Then you want to use less and less air because you have less to use and in working with a lot of clients over the years I've found that you know, once you get into your 60s and 70s, we typically are using less air. And a smaller venturi on the same horn basically allows you to keep playing longer. And uh, the horn will, of course, just play pretty much the same. It just requires less air. So you can buy these in any venturi size. And uh, the AGR will be available on our new Bravura Flugelhorn. It's on all Summit and Gravity trumpets now. It is not available on any other of our trumpets. The Bravura line and the HT line do not have it, and they, it's not an option on those. Um, and you can buy the AGR for any horn. Um, so like for a Bach, a Yamaha, a Selmer, a Kahn, a Getson, whatever you might have, um, we have an AGR kit that includes five shims and your choice of the style of receiver. 
which do they have different diameters and different profiles. And uh, with that, you can literally, in your own garage or basement, take the receiver off of your horn, move the top brace, and put the new one on and have your own AGR on your horn. And I'm going to show you how in the next video. We'll do a walkthrough and I'll show you how I do it to a box trumpet from beginning to end. It only takes about half an hour. So thank you for watching and uh, I hope you enjoy the new adjustable gap receiver. And of course, call us or email if you have questions. Thanks.